Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, today I want to talk about why the world needs bricks. Now, the heads of several dozen states representing some of the most influential countries in the world, thousands of delegates with hundreds of events and meetings uh, are happening and they're converging on Kazan for the BRICS summit. All the flags are out and flying, all the parade is happening, but why? Well, in essence, on the 22nd to 24th of October, in one of the most beautiful cities in Russia, the majority of the world will declare a new fairer world order. The world, the mothballed talk of a rules-based order is going to be thrown into the dustbin of history. The fact is the creators of the so-called global order have failed in all their endeavours. In trying to create that order, they failed miserably. Instead of order, the West gave the world only chaos, first controlled and then unmitigated whatever kind of happens chaos. Now, there have been fermenting conflict, pitting nations against each other, dragging countries into war, blood and death, and that's all the infamous global order has amounted to. Now, it's clear that the Western countries have done all of this to delay their own inevitable financial bankruptcy. But that hasn't worked out either. Their bankruptcy is already underway, camouflaged by talk of negative growth and a soft landing. Now, all of the big seven countries are drowning in debt, de dollarization is underway, and the number of homeless poor in their countries is reminiscent of the Great Depression. And Western cities are turning into squalid homeless shelters before our very eyes. All the gildings now being peeled off the lily of the golden billion. This means that there are no longer any benefits for the global majority because the main benefit was the rich and ever-growing consumer market. Now even Western consumers are cutting back on food and energy and other essentials. So they are no longer of interest to the globalist predators. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. Now, you can do this by making a small donation, which is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Now, everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. And I'm thanking you all now for watching, because every viewer is very important to me. But paradoxically, Westerners continue to lecture the global majority and wage a trade war against them with sanctions and outright robbery. And when that doesn't work, sovereign states begin to terrorise them with a threat of war, a real hot one, and if not that, then it's a colour revolution or a regime change is attempted. In essence, the situation is very similar to what happened in the world in the 1930s. Debtor countries have again turned against the creditor countries. All at the same time, the international organisations like the IMF, the World Bank and others have been corrupted and are now controlled by the Americans and it's simply too naive to expect any positive reaction, never mind any change from them. Now all the countries, the founders and new members of BRICS are all under this pressure. Russia is not the only country that has been subjected to outright confiscation of its assets and blatant robbery. India's tech industry was attacked by the Americans for developing too successfully. Brazil, its farmers were competing against the Americans very well. And South Africa has also been subjected to sanctions. <clears throat> Currently, of course, China is the subject of a brutal trade war by the EU and the US, in other words, under the mantra of the market will decide, the West has decided to simply kill off its competitors. Equal partnership? No, they don't like that sort of thing. Why sanctions? Well, sanctions are supposed to sow chaos and instability in a, a country. It can, its currency can be attacked until it collapses. Then companies, especially those in the extraction of valuable resources, are forced into bankruptcy. Then, of course, there's population protests and changes the government. That's when the American rapacious capitalist companies come in and buy up everything that's gone bankrupt. Now, that's how the invisible hand of the market has been strangling all competitors in the countries around the world for decades. Now, at least the BRICS payment system is being prepared for launch. 
Initially, it allowed foreigners to pay with their smartphones in BRICS countries, and next year they'll be able to use it for cashless transactions around all the member countries. And that's with just using the member countries' uh, currencies. Russia's Ministry of Finance and the Bank of Russia are going to unveil the BRICS Clear project. And that's a system of intergovernmental payments designed to replace the scandalous and unreliable Euroclear. Yeah, the one that handed over 200 billion of Russian assets to the Western looters to give to the Ukraine. Now, the transition to this system alone will save the participating countries around 30 billion a year. They'll also avoid having their assets stolen. The fair and equal competition within the BRICS framework allows countries to develop and grow rich peacefully, avoiding conflict with each other. It's not without reason that countries with a large number of historical contradictions between them have managed to work successfully and amicably within the framework of the association. Now, by its very existence, BRICS proves a simple truth that war is ruinous for normal people, peace is beneficial, while the West spends more and more on its armaments and it's falling into recession. <clears throat> the BRICS countries have now overtaken the infamous G7 in terms of share of global GDP. Now in terms of economic growth, they're growing twice as fast as the countries of the West and there's still a long way to go. And the BRICS countries know how to achieve success without the divisive, divisive and perverted LGBTQ plus agenda that the Westerners manage to shove into any economic initiative. BRICS don't need that, they don't want to, and they've rejected all of these perversions. So it's no wonder there's a long queue at the door of the BRICS. More than 35 countries want to join the alliance. I mean, some of the aspirants are unusual. Like us, such as NATO member Turkey, others in Kazan will be Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, Azerbaijan, Venezuela and Colombia, all waiting in turn. And there's actually no doubt after the end of the special military operation that even some European countries will be queuing up to join the BRICS because they tire also of living under the yoke of the Americans. Now, the BRICS summit, which begins tomorrow in Kazan, is a peaceful undertaking, and the leaders of the countries that make up the group never of tire of repeating that the island alliance is not an anti-Western alliance, but a pro-world, unipolar, uh, anti-multipolar uh, world. The president of Russia has said as much. Objectively, however, the global geopolitical jigsaw puzzle is such that on the one hand, there are hopelessly mired in debt and credit, and on the other hand, there are countries that are developing at an accelerated place that are even able to lend money. On the other hand, there are debtors, on the other, there are creditors. And exactly the same situation developed in the 1930s. The United States, ruined by depression, and Great Britain, ruined by the First World War, threw money at the main bankrupt of Europe, which was Germany, in order to set Adolf Hitler against the Soviet Union. You know, that was developing a new system, uh, and the rapacious capitalists didn't want the country to develop and show a clear and different system as an example to the Western working classes, so it was attacked. So even after it sacrificed 28 million of its citizens to join the Allies to defeat the Nazi hordes, yeah, 80% of the German army was defeated by the Soviet Union. It was the German economy that was invested in, and the West bent back to hating and baiting the Soviet Union. Now, it may have changed its name to Russia, but all the hatred and animosity is still there for all to see from the Western elites who dream of taking it over and installing a Western puppet like Yeltsin and balkanizing the country and looting its vast natural resources. That's not going to work and the Newlands, the Cheneys and the other neocons in Washington have failed. But the previous Western tragedy is now repeating itself now like a farce. Today the West is doomed to defeat. It's in the minority, it's lost all its wealth, it's deeply in debt, its military power and authority have all now gone. And all the former golden billion could do is interfere now and make a mess of small things in various parts of the world. Meanwhile, the BRICS business and economic trade will continue to surge forward with a wind behind it. 
looking forward into a peaceful and multipolar world and a wonderful future. Now, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website by clicking on the thanks button. Don't forget the comments. Uh, I do love to get your comments. love to read them. love to respond to them. And do share. Do, I would love to see more of you uh, coming to the channel. Thank you.